Hi, this is Chantal from the Purring Cat Studio and welcome back to my channel. Um, today I want to show you how I made this accordion uh, style journal and um, I will also show you what I came up with for this one and I will show you how you can make it yourself. I'm going to show you the base and the rest is really up to your own imagination. So if you wish to know how I did it, how about we meet each other on the other side of the intro. Okay, so here is my own version of the accordion style journal. I was inspired by a video from Shabby Soul. So <clears throat> I, I watched real quick what she did and I thought, okay, I can do this and I'm hoping that that's exactly what you're going to think is you're going to look at this one and say, okay, I can do this. <laughs> So, um, for the closure, I simply put a circle with two eyelets, I passed a nice rope ribbon around it, and I decided to just use this and make a bow like so on the side. Easy, easy peasy, and adds a lot of punch as you can see, look, it's really, it adds an impact. This journal, I'm, I'm going to back up a tiny bit. Okay. This journal I'm particularly proud of because I must say, well, it is in my style, but it's a little more, I don't know, there, I don't know what the word would be, but you'll see. For those of you who, who know my channel very well, uh, just by the thumbnails on YouTube, you can see I got a style going on. <laughs> I've, I've, you know, uh, over the, the 10 months now I've been doing this, these videos, um, I've, develop my own style and I'm I know it I recognize that I have a certain style and um, this is still my style but it's a tiny bit more I more not eclectic it's still maybe it's just me maybe it's uh, Tim Holtz papers because I did not play with my own paper although it would have looked very nice with my own papers but today I just felt inspired to play with somebody else's uh, papers <laughs> Okay, so as you can see, the the front and the back technically is a tag, but of course, you know, it kind of, it's hidden somewhat, but that's the top layer of the journal. And just to give you an example, now there's, there's a few ways you could do this. <clears throat> you can take tags that are already done and add the decoration afterwards like the papers the colors it could be um, uh, rice paper you could paint on them you can just glue paper whatever it is that you want to do or if you already have a double-sided paper you can cut your tags from it and avoid the whole decorating of those tags now I didn't go that route I actually put paper over, actually I didn't even use pre-made tags, I used cardboard like this, it came from a box of I don't know what, and I cut two tags the same size, and then what well, we, can't, we can't see, oh maybe you can if I really put it close, slowly, maybe you'll see how many layers, hold on, let me see. Uh, that's too close but yeah oh there you go I think you can see there's more than one layer here there's three and the reason for that like I said is I took a piece of cardboard and I decided to glue um, Tim Holtz papers on it so I really have three layers per tag um, but if you want to avoid this whole thing because technically you know I had to cut six uh, tags the same exact size to do this um, But there's a reason to this madness um, But you don't have to adhere to this madness. You can go ahead and do it your way I will explain why I did it this way um, But there's no wrong way you do whatever you want whatever is easier for you and it's all good plus there's always a way around Things and I'll show you in a few <clears throat> 
So I decided that this would be my front, but it could easily be this. It's the same. It's just as beautiful. I mean, I've used mostly Tim Holtz papers throughout, except for a few additions here and there. Um, but that's it. Okay, so you turn, we flip the first page. So that's the back. And here, that's, uh, I think it, they're called rice papers from uh, Marta at Murami Small Art. A very beautiful paper. I think they're called rice paper or collage paper. You can rip them easily. So I thought the butterflies were really nice. And this is just a simple, simple tag. Nothing special here. Um, here I used uh, Marami's uh, stencils to do a little bit of stenciling with um, texture paste. I really love the feel. And I made the number four. And I glued a few pieces of ephemera so that you could write right there. Because it is a journal. <clears throat> And I did the same thing here where I put this, you can write on this. And this is also a little pocket with more writing space on these. And of course more writing space here. And of course more. And there's always more. <laughs> and right here, um, this is simply attached with a little um, paper clip from Tim Holtz. And I, you've seen probably how I made these little beauties. And if not, there's, a, there's videos. I, I've used these many times. And I simply put more journaling paper right there. But you can always take this out because it's just holding by a clip. And then you can write right here or glue a picture. Whatever it is that you would like to do. So I will put these back. There you go. And right here, another spot to put some ephemera and I don't know if you see but I did use some uh, clear embossing powder on vellum I think it's really beautiful maybe if I put something darker would you see it better just to, just to show you let's see oh yes I can see that it's much better now here you see that there you go I think it's beautiful it's subtle <clears throat> and of course you can add as much papers as you wish for journaling um, here I put this tag that I had in a bunch of ephemera that I purchased I decided to embellish it and I added more papers for journaling because of course you can write on both sides of this and inside of here like so and because I put the tag upside down, I can hang a beautiful little charm. Okay, so now that this here is the back or the front, <laughs> you can decide. And again, I made another little pocket with a piece of ephemera and more journaling space. I love these tiny little journaling space. I think they're perfect. They're like little secrets. So then we flip it open again on this side and I did some more stenciling and of course a pocket with more papers to journal. This is a lot more decorated than it seems. I'm not describing every tiny little pieces but <clears throat> I'm sure if you're an avid crafter you, you can see like this is a sticker I added and these and this and this here and actually this I forgot to show which is just like a little you know diamond hanging here on this thread with the um, cheesecloth and stamped pieces of fabric it just adds a lot of texture and interest and things dangling I just love it and some more fabric with stamps and this here just moves this way and you have a nice little secret journaling spot of course you could always write in the back of this if you just flip the journal and you can write here and then you just put it right back like so and here I decided to use one of um, I purchased some ephemera this week and they came in and I'm using, I kept, of course, the envelopes. I could make them myself with 
you know vellum paper and such but <clears throat> I already have them so why not I just made it a tiny bit shorter so I cut it and I glued it and then I cramped it I think you call it so it's really cute I wrote goodies and of course inside as you can see is filled with goodies that you can use in this journal or another journal it's as you wish another pocket here this time it's fabric again fabric with uh, stamping but this time I used it as a pocket with a lot of journaling space hiding right there <clears throat> and now we're back to the front so that is the tour of this beautiful a little <clears throat> pardon me journal so I will show you when you open it completely it's I made mine actually quite long so if we want to count pages you know by these it would be one two three four five six so 12 total because it's both sides so it's kind of a you know it's a lot but it's I think it's a perfect number of course you can also you know see <laughs> that's the accordion so when you open it that's what it looks like from here and then on the other side and there it is so I did add a lot of things that you know if I don't describe them then um, maybe it, it doesn't seem like it but I did make sure there was plenty to look at and touch and feel different textures and you know so I will show you now how I'm not gonna tie it again just in case I need to open it and show you something so I'm gonna put this aside okay so as I said if these are just like I had purchased them I don't remember why because this is totally not my style that must have been at the very beginning <clears throat> of my crafting uh, adventures <laughs> but it doesn't matter you can always cover them right so I keep them but for the sake of the example today I'm gonna turn it this way and I'm going to use again Tim Holtz but I'm not going to use uh, like the sheet of paper I use well we probably barely I don't know you can see you see this was all the same paper and then I use the second page so as you can see the background it's all the same so it was you know Tim Holtz is, is double-sided um, his pads are double-sided <clears throat> see this was like all writing and ledger and this was the wallflower collection paper so I had used the same um how do you say like the the how can i say just like two pages of 12 by 12 it was the bottom part because i had cut it on top to do something else so i had two bottoms if you will that was left um uh, but now they're all used up because that was a scrap that i used for this but i didn't want to create another scrap so what i did was i had these scraps which are you know at the end of uh, Tim Holtz pads he has these mini version of the bigger pad so this would be the mini version of the wallflower um, book and this oh this one as well actually yes it is okay so it doesn't matter because I I just want to show you how to do it and like I said I didn't want to create another scrap and you know what I'm thinking that this will end up looking fabulous anyways so what you want to do is, so let's say this is the back and this is the front, just for the sake of knowing what we're doing. So you would start by gluing like to this to the back because when you, when you fold it, you decide first of all how much space you want to leave and what you want to show so would that be something you would want if not you can always I don't know change papers maybe I don't know let's see about this one just for fun you know now this it would be this way or maybe you want to start 
Maybe this would be your inside. How about this would be the outside? Okay, this is upside down. I can see that. Although at the end, it doesn't really show <laughs> once you decorate. But just for the sake of the example, I'm going to do what I need to do first. So I will rip the top part because that's what gives it this look right here. See? And the bottom, I won't worry about it for now. And you'll understand why as we go along. You could rip both. Uh, like I said, there's no wrong way. I'm just showing you what I learned from the lady at, what did I say? Shabby Soul, I hope. Soul Shabby? No, Shabby Soul. <laughs> oh. I always tell you I will link or I will tell you the name. And I try and tell you because usually I forget to link when I edit and then I feel bad because you know I want to tell you where I got the idea okay so we got this of course I would ink the edges and now I would start and then I would say okay so I want to show let's say mm, this much on this side so this would be a smaller version than the one I, I did right because mine is is a lot bigger so let's say you want to show about this that's that that looks good I like that and so you want to of course fold it and you want to say okay so I want to leave about the same space on each side so how about that leak that looks pretty good so now I'm gonna just put you in a little closer so I think this is a good that's a good size to leave on each side you know an amount of space so I will fold this like that I like that that's a good size for me so this would be like right here once we get gluing perfect so now I have to of course fold the rest of it I will come and fold it so it's even to here you don't need to use your bone folder you don't you really don't it's all gonna work out there you go I like it okay so it just so happens that I have what I, we will call a tab it just so happens that just like that I could stop right there right and I could say, okay, well, this is it. This is going to be the journal. So once this is glued to the tab, you would open it. And then you would open this. And then you would close. And then you would turn around. And of course, you would do it again. And that's okay. But if you want to add another piece, so what I would do is... You would try and rip so that it kind of matches the ripping here. So I would say right there. And you just keep going. You can always fix it. So don't worry if it's not perfect. Just keep going. Don't worry about it. Keep on cutting. There. And then you would say, okay, does it match? Hmm, not really. I'll cut a tiny bit like so. Let's see if this is better. Yes. Yes, yes. Hold on. Whoops. <clears throat> this works. So for me, I will put double-sided tape. You could put glue. Um... You could put fabric uh, on top of the glue if you want to make it look seamless and such, but just wait though. Just You have to wait until you're all situated and decide how you're going to do the rest of it. Because this might be a spot where you're going to put a pocket and the seam will disappear, you know. So <clears throat> don't worry about it at the beginning is what I'm trying to say, I guess. <laughs> So once you're sure everything is glued, 
we will keep on folding. So we're going to go back and keep doing our accordion. So we're going to do like this. Okay. Like so. Oops. And one more time. And I think we're finishing with a tab. I'm hoping. Oh, it might be a little tight. I hope not. Otherwise, it's okay. We'll just go back and cut like one of the folds. Let me see. Oh. Yay! I don't have to do anything. It's perfect. Well, now that is awesome. Oh, I love it. Yes. Okay. So the reason I like you can take a double sided uh, paper and put the tab and then cover that part if you want. It's fine. Or you could do like I do. I did. Sorry. Um, let me grab a piece of I don't know if this is that probably wouldn't match, but it doesn't matter just to give you an example. Okay, so I'm just going to, so what I would do is, well, technically I would glue the fur. Okay, you know what? How about I do at least one to show you because I don't want you to say, oh my goodness, I don't understand because I have to stop assuming everybody knows everything. That's not true. I didn't know. <laughs> okay, so what I will do just for the sake of, um, you know, uh, everybody understanding is I will I will just use this it's fine this is just a piece of paper that was laying around plus I heavily decorate things so it could work in the end if not it's okay it's just scraps of papers okay so I would glue this And then, of course, I would cut around once it's all nice and glued. There we go. Okay. Perfect. I'm going to do the hole right away so I don't lose sense of where it is. Because if I cover the other side right away, I won't know where the hole was. There. Okay. So this would be, let's say, actually, that actually kind of works. <laughs> Oops, I didn't cut this properly. Oh, I see why. Okay, and I would ab absolutely ink the edges, etc. So this actually works really well. I don't I don't dislike it. Ooh, I like this too. Okay, so this would be beautiful just like that. So what I would do then is I would trace first of all. Sorry. See, when I did it, I was like quiet. I was not explaining anything to anyone. I didn't have to concentrate on anything but work. So I'm going to trace it out first now if you have a how do you say a punch or something that makes them all even and you don't have to struggle then that's good you can just punch them all out at once I don't have that so I have to make them all by hand and that's why I said if you want to use you know double-sided paper right away and maybe make the tab um, smaller then it would be easier to hide with fabric and other papers and all kinds of embellishments but if you want to proceed like I did this is how I did it except it wasn't a very thin piece of paper like this it was Tim Holtz the whole way and at the same time, it did give my cover uh, 
I don't know if you heard that, but that's really, really solid. Because you have the cardboard from the box of, I don't know, cereal, I think it was. No, I don't know. doesn't matter. <laughs> okay, so I cut the other piece so I know it will fit. Okay, so now what I would do, what I did, is I would glue... I glue it at the bottom. You could glue it in the middle. It doesn't matter because I'll show you with the other one. So I made them a tiny bit lower than the paper. That's how I decided to do mine. And then when I added pockets, I made the pockets go outside of the page so that it matches the top here and there everywhere but not every page so i think that gives it the like an overall feel of well i don't know of what but <laughs> the feel you're seeing right now it's it's even uneven i don't know if that makes sense <laughs> see this pocket is hanging this one too but this is straight and this is barely over the edge just a tiny tiny bit this of course comes up a lot so it's really up to you. I'm just showing you what I've come up with. So let's say this one I decide to go like right here because I now try and remember where you want it like in the middle. So what I would do is I would put the glue here. Oops, if the glue comes out, there we go. Because I know I want about just about that much going coming out, so it'll be easier to put it in the middle. Let me get closer here to put it in the middle so that I have the even on each side. So let's say I want it exactly there. Okay. Of course, I would wait for it to be glued. <laughs> And then you glue this on top and then the tab disappears that's that's the only reason why I did it this way okay if you don't want to do that and you want to do a smaller tab like let's say maybe half of this well then nothing prevents you from um, I don't know let me see from hiding let's say the piece of tab that will be showing let's say that that this is it with some fabric um, this was a short piece of fabric but like so so let's say the tab is right here you would put this here and then you put something there first thing you know that the tab is not even a question anymore nobody sees it so there's all kinds of way to go around it if you don't want to do what I'm doing this is just one way to do it and I'm just showing you so you can develop your own way there. Now, where's my little piece of... I like to make sure there's no glue bumps. And I also think that it glues better when it's thinner. A thinner layer of glue is, to me, from my own experience, more efficient than a big blob. Okay, now I'm just trying to align everything. And worst case, I'll just trim. It doesn't matter. I did not choose the paper, I just grabbed something I saw next to me. It actually works. I can imagine what I would do to enhance everything. So see, it's, it's going a little bit over. That's okay. We will trim. Trimming shall be done. Okay, let me just... There we go. And then, all you have to do is just trim the excess. Now, of course, like I said, if you already have a, um, a punch that makes every single one of your tags the same, then yes, my goodness, you are lucky. Go ahead and use it. If not, it's just a tiny bit more work, but you, can, you will still get the job done. And in the end, with all the embellishments, it, nothing shows anyways. 
there. And then of course I would ink the edges. I should have inked this before, I forgot. As I said, when I'm chit-chatting at the same time, I do sometimes forget a few steps, but it's okay. If it's not super glued, I can always try and cheat and just barely go like this. There, it wasn't glued completely yet. There you go. It is glued here, but oh well, doesn't matter. There, it doesn't show. <laughs> Perfect. So then, of course, after that, I would add the eyelet, and then I would proceed to decorate. But not yet, because I would just want to probably do the next one, and then I would start decorating now don't forget I would have also inked the edges and then all you need to do is add pockets and flips and whatever it is that you want to add and you got yourself an accordion journal see it would be like that and as I've showed you right here like this is flush to the edge but not this. This is just a piece of ripped, again, leftover Tim Holtz paper. And I made it straight on each side, but I ripped it here and I ripped it at the bottom. And as you can see, it hangs. And I like it like that. That's what I want because I wanted to have a repeat of <clears throat> the top part, sorry, the top part right here. And this one, I didn't do it. Plus, I had something I wanted to put here. Just a little reminder, though. Um, like, where? Where is it? Oh, right here. Just a little reminder. Let me take a sip. If you do something like punch a hole through a page or put a clip, um, be mindful to look what's on the other side. So when I started, um, I opened the journal and I made this you know and then this and then this and then when I decided to put this I thought okay what's going to be on the other side so at first there was nothing so it was perfect but you have to unfold it otherwise I probably would have grabbed the other page and then I would have you know maybe torn it by accident but I opened it and I put it there and then I kept decorating and then when I turned it around I liked that this showed so I left it and there you go but for this for example I did not want it to show on the other side so I covered it with a tiny little number um, because that's what they look like when you open them it's not ugly it's not ugly at all it's just that every time I would spin the paper this would also spin so sometimes it would end up this way this way that way and that I, I don't know it just annoyed me so <laughs> I didn't want that so I decided to hide it and I think it works perfectly so there it is and I mean the rest is really up to you and your own imagination and like I said I used stenciling I used beautiful stickers and ephemera I made all kinds of pockets some are not even pocket they're just they're just holding with a pin but they are solid enough that they hold they actually hold the paper because you don't want the paper to fall I mean I've created this vellum pocket with the butterfly there's all this is not even like a pocket this is a tag upside down and then I added a piece of fabric a tiny piece of oval paper some cheesecloth this beautiful words these words by Tim Holtz and then I decided to you know at this this was not even a corner anything it's a tag it's an upside down tag you know so it's really up to you you decide how you want it to look I really love how I know I'm changing subject but I love how you can let me back up I love how depending on how you flip it it just like 
it keeps going right I, I guess that's the goal of the uh, <laughs> of the accordion it just keeps going you flip you flip you flip you keep flipping and again and again it never ends <laughs> Okay, so this is it for me. I hope my explanations were clear. I mean, it was fast, but it's really, that's all it is. It's, it's, I mean, that's it. The rest is really you adding pieces of paper to make a pocket. Um, and like everything, like I showed you in my first book, it's really, really easy. The, the base is easy right it's just then it's up to you to decorate it any way you want um and there it is so i hope you've enjoyed this uh, video it wasn't too long <laughs> usually i'm close to the hour <laughs> um but i really do hope you um enjoyed it i hope you learned something i hope i've uh, it maybe inspired you to make your own it really doesn't take much as you can see it's mostly scraps really it's what it was i had scraps of tim holtz um papers and i decided to just you know play with them and now that i've started this one i might actually finish it because this paper i just picked i don't know it just fits i think this is very interesting and i think this would end up being something very pretty so i hope i inspired you i thank you again for um being with me Thank you for all your beautiful comments. I give you a great big hug from here in Nova Scotia, Canada. Wherever you are in the world, I really do hope you are happy, healthy, and safe. Thank you for watching. See you soon. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>